I want to say congratulations to Laney football. They were ranked the number one junior college football team in the nation for 2018, so congratulations. And why do I bring it up? That's right, look at that. The big dog used to play football. I was a quarterback back in the day. And you guessed it, I played for the Laney Eagles for a couple years too. Man, look at all that hair. All right, I have to replace the brake booster on this truck, and I figured eh, I'll show you a couple tests that can be done to test the brake booster to see if it's operating properly. So uh, come along and show you what I do. Okay, here's the brake booster right here, and you can see it's attached to the master cylinder, and most are going to have a vacuum line attached to it, and then some kind of a check valve. In this case, the check valve's right here. Sometimes the check valve is in the middle of the line or built into the hose or something like that. But those are the main parts right there. And without going into too many details, basically there's a diaphragm in here. And then when vacuum is applied to that diaphragm, it creates a pressure differential from one side to the other. And that pressure, pressure differential, if I could say it right, basically just makes it a little bit easier to press that brake pedal. And so, in short, for this thing to operate, we need to have vacuum applied to it. So a couple checks we can do is we need to make sure that there's vacuum coming from this hose right here. And then we need to make sure that the vacuum is staying in there once it goes in there. So this check valve, it, the job of it is to hold the vacuum inside here. Otherwise, as soon as you turn the vehicle off, you'd lose pressure and then you'd lose all your brake assist. Um, same thing if the throttle um, is wide open for any length of time, um, you'll start to lose vacuum and so that can decrease the efficiency of this. So it needs to be able to store enough air inside there, enough vacuum I should say, so that you can press the brakes two or three times and they'll still work and it'll still assist you. Because if this thing is not working properly, it's going to be much more difficult to press on your brakes. And the brakes will still work, but it's going to take a lot more force to make them work. Okay, as you see, I have the vacuum hose to the brake booster disconnected and then I have the check valve pulled out. And so this just goes in there like that, and then this sits inside the brake booster. And so basically an easy way to test this is you can suck on one end, just suck on this end, and air should flow through just like the vacuum is supposed to, but we should not be able to blow back through it. And I already tested it, there's nothing wrong with this. And you can see the reason it does that is this little valve right here, a spring-loaded valve. So yeah, air can go this way, but it can't go back that way. Um, and then for this, all we're going to do, and I showed this in my P0171 video, is I'm just going to connect that and we'll fire up the vehicle and make sure we got manifold vacuum on it. And as you can see, we have manifold vacuum. Now, of course, if your hose is popped off or there's a huge hole in it or something like that, well, naturally, that's going to cause your brake booster not to work. So if that's the case, you got to get that fixed first. So in this case, our vacuum hose is good. We have plenty of vacuum in there, and our check valve is good. So now we can do some tests inside the vehicle. Now, when we do our tests inside, if they fail at all, then we know that the problem is internal in here, the seals or the diaphragm, because we've eliminated everything else. And of course, I've already told you this one is bad, so we know it's going to fail. So at least this way you get to see what a bad one looks like. All right, for this first test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the vehicle on. I'm going to let it run in one or two minutes. That way we build up some pressure inside that brake booster, and then we'll do a test with the vehicle off. So I'll, I'll come back as soon as I'm ready to turn it off. All right, now the vehicle's been running for a couple minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the brake like this and hold it, and then I'm going to turn the vehicle off. And it should hold there for 30 seconds. I should be able to hold that with uh, no more effort than I'm doing right now, and it should stay there for at least 30 seconds. Let's try it. We'll turn the vehicle off, and we'll just hold it. And I don't know if you can see my foot, but that master cylinder, it's pressing, it's forcing my foot back. So what's happening is there's obviously a leak inside that booster, and that air is just escaping. And so we have no more assist. You see, I can't even push it anymore. Now with a good brake booster, we'd have been able to hold our foot right there for a good 30 seconds without issue. After that, it may start pressing back, but for at least the first 30 seconds, we should be able to hold it there with the same amount of effort that we were using before we shut the vehicle off. Um, and so obviously that one failed our test. 
So when it presses back like that, either we have an issue with the brake booster leaking itself, which that's the case in this one, or it could be the check valve, but we already tested the check valve and verified that it's working, but that could also do, that could mimic this and because all the air is escaping right past the check valve and right back into the manifold. So if you haven't checked that check valve, that's one area where you would want to look before condemning the booster on this test. All right, now the next test we're going to do, basically I'm going to press on the brake while starting the vehicle. Now we know this is bad, so this one, this pedal's all the way up at the top, so it's not going to go down a little bit. But on a normally working one, you should be able to press a little bit down when you're pressing the brake because you're using up a little bit of the vacuum that's in there. And then when you turn the vehicle on, that pedal should sink just a little bit and no more. And that's an indication that the booster's working and that vacuum is being applied. So we'll do that test right now. So we'll press on it and start the vehicle. And it should sink down just a little bit. Now this one is gonna sink down a little bit further than normal because we know we have a bad brake booster. But on a normally operating brake booster, it would just sink down just a little bit. And that's a good indication everything's working properly. Now, if it doesn't sink down a little bit, that's when we need to go and make sure we got vacuum and we make sure we don't have a hose that's uh, blown apart or leaking or disconnected. Or um, it could be a problem with the check valve not allowing vacuum into our booster. You know, the opposite of the problem we're having. But in this case, we already checked all that stuff at the beginning, but any of those could be an issue if that thing doesn't drop a little bit like normal. Another test we can do, we'll run the car for one to two minutes, build our pressure back up inside the brake booster, and then we'll shut it off. And then we should be able to press and get three good brakes out of it with assist. But the first one, when we press down, it's gonna go down to about the normal position. And then the second time we press down, it'll be a little bit higher. And then the third time we press, it'll be a little higher than that. And that's a normally operating system. So we'll be one, then two, then three, like that. Now, obviously, on a bad one like this, when we hit it, it's not even gonna go anywhere. But on, on one that was working, that's what we wanna see. We wanna see it go down all the way then go down a little bit less, and then go down a little bit less. So each time you're having a little bit less vacuum assist, and that's a properly working system. Okay, so the engine's been running a couple minutes, and I don't know if you can see my feet, but you see where I pushed that pedal? That's about the normal spot. So whenever, when we do this test, at the first time we press it, we wanna see it go about that far. And then we let off, and then the second time we press it, it'll be just a little bit less. And then the third time we press it, it'll be a little bit less than that. Three times is enough. We don't need to check it any further than that. So that would, that would give us three brake assists with no vacuum connected to the system. And so that's what we want to see. So I'll let it run a minute more and then we'll turn it off and check it. All right, we'll turn it off and now we'll press it three times and we'll see if we have brake assist three times. And we'll press one and I barely had any assist. And the second one, about the same and the third now yeah, almost all of them are the same very very little assist to none so that would definitely be an indication that we have a bad brake booster or possibly a check valve but probably more times than not that's going to be a bad booster that fails that test right there but as you can see we have nothing now for the last test we're going to test our system make sure it holds pressure so with the vehicle off we're going to press the several times and deplete all the vacuum. So as you can see, I didn't even have to do that. The vacuum is depleted. So now we're gonna press and hold it steady with firm pressure. We're gonna hold it there for 15 seconds and our foot should not move. And as long as it doesn't move, then that means we're good. All right, I think that was more than 15 seconds and my foot has not moved. So that's a good indication that we don't have any leaks and that our master cylinder is good. If that pedal started to creep down, then that means either we have a leak somewhere in the system or the, the seals inside the master cylinder are bad and pressure is getting past those seals. So that's a good test to make sure we don't have any other issues. Well, there you go. Those are a few tests that I use to check the brake booster on these uh, older systems. Newer systems that use electronic uh, boost, they're a little bit different to test, but on these old ones with vacuum, this is how I do it. In any event, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.